you what's going on yo it's j small reviews here back at it again with another video man bringing you guys today uh, a little bit of like a breakdown kind of explanation more of a general topic video was supposed to have this up yesterday was out of town doing some stuff we're here sunday with it though and as you can see this is going to be about um our ltpr 2024 mid-year power rankings as a part of the let's talk battle rap team had a part in it last year obviously have a have a part in it this year in making this list um, and I think it's just a good checkpoint, uh, you know, especially when we talk the best years in battle rap, you'll hear people say he's having a great year, he's having a great year. Well, now that we're at that six month, that halfway point, we put down the resumes in the article, which I will link down below. So if you have any resume questions, it's all in the link down below. Um, everyone's battles, even the way that we try to call the battles for the most part. Um, and, but just like last year, man, it's just gonna be, like I said, general topic video, discuss a few different things. Obviously the main complaints and critiques, people who thought uh, the main people who were mentioned as snubs for the list um a couple people who were may have been underrated people didn't understand why they're on the list explain their year a little bit and also just the people that just missed the list because obviously we do work for 15 names here but we have written out work for like 25 different names you know a lot of people are considered in the process but without further ado let's just get into talking about the list so first thing I want to address, uh, one of the quicker things is, like I said, some people that just missed the list, but I got three names here that really had in multiple versions were swapped on the list, swapped off. Some quick reasons why they didn't make it, and that is Loso, Trufo, and Bad News. Um, if there was an honorable mention section, these I think would be the three that would make it. Uh, with Loso, good strength of schedule, you know what I'm saying? Official, Gichi Gotti, and Tay Rock. <clears throat> and we obviously know the Tay Rock and Gichi Gotti battle was if it was it within a 24 hour span. It was obviously within the same weekend. I don't remember if it's within 24 hours or not. Um, and he was supposed to get die in both, and he did the farthest from that. You know, him and Rock was battle the night. Very good battle, close battle. I edged it to Rock. Judges also ended up giving it to Rock. Um, but many people did have Loso. You know, without a judge result, it would be a good debatable battle. And then the second battle is versus Geechee, where even worse, you know, if it wasn't a judge result, it would be a clear win. I feel like Loso clearly won that battle. Um, and even though it is does go down as two judge losses, we recognize the performance and material there. And, and there's credit he's given because we, we can add context to that situation, even if it is 0-2 on the judge books. However, that third battle is versus official, where he lost 3-0. Crowd wasn't the most fair. It was a tough situation. But at the end of the day, the man lost 3-0, and he's only got a three-battle case. So that is just what knocked him off. Although... In many versions, right? We wanted him at 15. Trufo's just had a solid year. X Factor, Active, and Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes battle really was not... Still think it's a good foe performance, but it was kind of um, marketed. You know what I'm saying? Is this like super clear win? And as time has went on, you know, Snake did pretty good in that battle. Um, I do have foe uh, edging the second and winning the third in that battle. But there's, I mean, more than enough. I, I'd even say most people on the replay have Snake Eyes, right? So you got to respect that. Um... And then the last battle is Active, who he is a heavy favorite again. So it's a good case. It's one where we just felt it was outpowered by, a, a, you know, a couple, 15 others here, right? But it's not that he did anything bad, and he has bigger matchups on the horizon. And last one's bad news, and this just comes down to the JC battle not being dropped. Uh, 30k win versus Arsenal and bullpen. He was good in that battle. Uh, it's doing really good views, too, on a side note. Uh, beat Dot in an in in entertaining battle out in Kansas City. Nothing too crazy. If you add a JC possible win, we don't know the result, right? But if it was a JC win, probably would have made the list. You know what I'm saying? If he lost, then maybe he's at where he needs to be at. But those were definitely those like three cases we looked at that just missed the cut. And then from there, uh, we're just going to go from 15 to 1. We're going to kind of just talk about each name. And obviously, this is where you're going to have the names that people want to pull off uh, and some of the names that people think should be higher. And right at 15 is someone that I saw a lot of people say and maybe shouldn't be on the list, and that is Sharon. I think that's just a lack of you know, maybe people being all the way in tune with his work. I'm not expecting everybody here, you know what I'm saying, to go chase down Sharon work, especially when he's kind of battled, uh, I'm not going to say it's, there's still big leagues, but he battled EK on the Raza card for the Raya. I know that many people may have not watched the Raza card, but EK is comp, comp that's respected even going into an ill will battle coming up, right? Comp that him and how he's been versus top tiers recently. And Danny didn't just beat EK. He wiped the floor with EK. Um, battle with Cali Smooth, pretty good. A win at that. And then most importantly, uh, I'm going to forget a couple here. He obviously is the Philippines battle that went to a million. I think I'm forgetting one more three-rounder at the moment. But the main one that I think most people would just are forgetting because it's in the first quarter is him versus Danny Myers on the UW card, which if you remember, there's a lot of top tiers in that UW card. A lot of different battlers. A lot of battlers on this list who were on there. 
And Sharon was the best one. It was it was a three round master class, um, two one if not three zero oh clear, and he got better every round. His second was explosive. His third was damn near round of the night of that event up there with uh, Geechee's round versus Ines. <clears throat> you just got to give a lot of credit. So when we're talking like a four and zero, oh, five and zero, oh, damn near clean type of slate. And you have a main piece with that Danny battle where you didn't just beat Danny. You know, it's not been the best Danny year, but you kind of smoked him. That's and one performance of the night amongst all those other top tiers. We're talking the 15th spot here. He's not 10. He's not 5, right? I think it's more than fair enough to put him in that top 15. Of So that's why we had him there. Uh, official at 14. Another one I saw some people trying to pull her off for uh, with many, one of the many two battle cases we have here. And some people are just want the volume over that. But I believe that just like in traditional battle rap, some of the best years we remember from the YouTube era, you can have four to five battles by the end of the year and still maybe have the best year. You know what I'm saying? It's just about who's rapping the best, not who's rapping the most. And officials two battles are the Loso battle. We talked about it a little bit earlier. 3-0 victory, home game, very much so a home game, but she was good in that battle. You know, you can't take away from her. So that's that's a 3-0 over someone who's respected comp on the year. And then the Vixen battle, which, you know, people have been waiting for for a minute, power punching. It ends up being one of the best female versus female battles um, of the year. It's it, the only competition, which I'd probably put above it, is Jazz versus Coffee, but a very good battle. Uh, I had Vixen live on the pre- on the replay. I ended up edging official that first round instead. Uh, I think it's like a four out of five type of battle, right? So when your two battles are this big match people have been waiting on and you give your best performance in quite some time, great three rounds, have really one of the better battles of the weekend with Vixen, I, uh, at least from our perspective, we had you edge in the battle. And then you also have a 3-0 over Loso, who's kind of made some noise this year. I mean, battle Geechee and Rock, and neither of them did him like how official did him, right? <clears throat> so for me, it's another one. I saw some critique for that, but I stand by those official and Sharon picks. And just because maybe you don't remember the years impactfully or it didn't get talked about on Twitter as much, that does not make that those battles any less high-impact battle rap. Vixen and uh, official and, and like a Sharon and Danny Myers battle. From there, you have Miss Hustle, Jazz the Rapper, and A-Ward um, all in a row, which I feel like for a few years now, it, <laughs> these three are always somewhere around each other. And I don't feel like there's too much to discuss. A-Ward's got that rock battle and like a series of five to six wins that are all lower tier, right? The material's there for him. The rock battle's good, although a judge lost was a close battle, obviously, that he did good in. So it's it's not enough impact and, like, high-quality standout work, not enough top tiers on strength of schedule to bump him in the top 10, but solid per usual. And as for Jazz and Hustle, both damn near, even though the... Hustle has another one-rounder. They both have two battle cases as well. Jazz with Bizzo and Coffee, good work. And then Hustle with Swamp and um, Swamp and Chess. I love her rounds for Chess. Good work. So those two, maybe you could debate it back and forth. comes down to preference at some point when, when we talk about them. They're always next to each other in these lists. But that uh, 15 to 11 just felt really confident uh, with, even though 14 and 15 were questioned a lot, kind of in that public eye view. So then we get into the top 10, where, where most of the conversation goes down, right? So at number 10, we got Franchise. I saw some people like that. And sh- I saw Franchise and Sharon were probably the two main names I saw people saying take them off. Uh, even if you had Franchise a little lower, I think he's got to be on this 15. Three battles in the second quarter, him versus Hansel is good. A lot of people got him winning that battle. Uh, him versus Eunice is obviously high impact on a card with Rock versus versus A-Ward, Geechee versus Loso, I've wrapped on it. Franchise has by far the performance of the night and by far the round of the night with his second round. So super high impact, was supposed to lose that battle going in too, and then takes out the uh, the number one rookie, you know what I'm saying? It made it, so now number one rookie is debatable. It wasn't going into that battle. Um, so big win, and then Swerve on Gnome, pretty good win. The footage isn't all that. So like I said, if you want to debate him a little bit more down, but I think getting a win on Gnome is impressive. I think the Eunice performance is one of the more notable, you know, really of the year. And then the Hansel battle is a good supporting piece. And then at number nine, you got Av. And I think a lot of people, uh, this is the main one that I've heard, you know what I'm saying? That Av should be on this list, um, possibly in the top five, possibly in the top three. And to me, listen, off pure rapping, he's here. You know what I'm saying? He's here off of just the raps itself. Um, because I don't think his strength of schedule matches up to some of the other opponents on this list. I think that's going to change. I mean, obviously he has the hollow battle coming up. And if he does, if he is able to two, one win in that, or just have a great, you know, top battle of the year with hollow, I think I'd have a much more identical view for those that do think the Av should be top three or top five. But I just think with the four and the one rounder he has right now versus J2, who we'll talk about someone else that people thought was snubbed. I disagree with that one, although he's had a good year in his own right. 
Um, but out of the four three rounders, he's got Rose and Marv, which was predicted heavily to go in to win. But I think material met up. I he had performance of the night on the trenches, in my opinion. So. That's solid work. And then your next other half of the resume is Don Marino and Big T. And like I said, he's a favorite in all four of these battles, but especially with Don Marino and Big T. Granted, he took him on the road, but there's nowhere in uh, there's nowhere on the globe that Don Marino or Big T could beat um, Av, man. So my thing is off material, listen, he's in the single digits. He's top 10. Uh, and that's with the strength of schedule that isn't that crazy. So you add the hollow battle. Granted, if he gets one more fight, whether that be Chef Trez, Twerk, his case is going to, I truly think by the end of the year, he is competing for that top three or top five. But right now, his strength is schedule, and then with that, the impact, because the bigger fights also come with more impact, which is why some of these guys above him who are rapping just as well, if not maybe a little bit less, a little bit better, depends on what you like, right? But other elite rappers that are putting out content are having schedules with some tougher competition um, and have quite a few wins themselves. So that's why we had Av at nine, uh, Coffee Brown at number eight. Jazz and E-Heart, good looks for Grant. I had her losing to E-Heart, handle business otherwise, um, versus Jade and Arsenal. Chef Trez at seven, a couple people thought that he should be higher, battling a lot this year, just like last year where he's got work mid-tiers, you know, he's he's kicking ass, uh, versus lower tiers, he's kicking ass. I think the only difference is last year he was top three, when he faced top tiers, Twerk, John John, etc., he was winning, if not having like great debatable battles there. And if I look at his two top tiers that he's taken on this year with T Top, he he was good. He really is good in the battle, but T Top is just that much better. Still had him winning all three rounds. Judge win at that. And then the clips battle, I do have him winning, but not very good footage. You know what I'm saying? And he does play a part in that. He could have made kind of a moment of that battle somewhat. I mean, I have him winning, but it's it's it doesn't even feel that clear, you know what I'm saying, like, he was not that great that day, so maybe a little bit better versus the top comp, but still seven is a good spot, Bill Collector at six, Rock, Chess, and Clean, it's been a solid year for him so far, um, Swamp at five with his two battles, and Swamp and Fonz at four with his two battles, and I saw some people, people really are cool with Fonz and Swamp up there, it's not about the placement, but it speaks to the, the having less battles, right, some people on here got seven, eight battles, Fonz and Swamp only got two, but look what they did with their two battles, and Fonz, I actually, they both might have a one-rounder as well, but in terms of three-round battles, obviously the main focus. Fonz has got a win over Geechee, one of the best battles of the year with Chef Trez. Swamp has got a win, a dominant win over Averb in the biggest grudge match of his career up to this point, and then also has the Miss Hustle battle on Gnome, solid joint. Many people, including myself, have him winning against the woman who's just named the number one woman, Wodi, in 2023. So my thing is, listen... It's great to have 10, 12 battles, and that's 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 won awards before. That's that's had notable years before. There's nothing wrong with that. But somebody having five to six battles, even four to five battles, all versus killers and all with very great performances and results could hit just as effectively, you know what I'm saying, if you set your schedule up right. And that leaves you with the top three, which uh, at number three, we have Rum Nitty. I feel like this one from three to six, I feel like you could move him around. But for us, uh, that Lux battle, obviously doing a lot of heavy lifting because it's not a battle of the year contender. It's simply the battle of the year. We don't get instant classics that often. His three rounds in terms of just his performance matched up against any other peak three rounds here. I think it fights with anyone at the list, even Rock and T-Top at uh, one and two. And I think he has good supporting pieces with the quest battle, which one battle the night on a card uh, with Av, uh, with Av and Marv won on it. A um, couple other battles that happened with Osaurus and B-Magic. And then the Saint material, which granted, Quest and Saint, maybe you don't love for strength to schedule. They're not the biggest names. Definitely agree with that, which is why I say it could be debated. But his material for Saint, you know, which I just reviewed was pretty crazy. So off material, then the impact of the Lux battle kind of finds himself here. And then T-Top at two and Tay Rock at one very easily. And what's funny is they really haven't had much debate. But for those that ask, within the first 15 seconds of making this list, we knew who was number one and number Number two, um, T Top has put in a ton of work. Both have been high volume, and he's been mostly consistent. You know what I'm saying? Even versus Twerk and Danny, when the footage isn't crazy, still wins. And then as for Tay Rock, you know what I'm saying? We're talking nine to ten battles. The footage is great. The results are great. I can't ask more of him, and he's clearly having the best year of anyone in 2024. And that is it here. Um, you know, just kind of for my breakdown of the list 1 through 15, I feel like this is really less controversial than the one we had last year. Maybe just hearing a little less shit about it, right? But uh, obviously feel confident in it. Like I said, Tay Rock at 1, no-brainer. I actually think at this point, uh, not only are people going to have to catch up, but I think it would take Rock 
probably taking a, a, an L or, or something happening, you know, on his behalf for the run, right? Like not just somebody out battling him from here on out, but he would have to take an L or two or make a mistake because it just he's just had that good of a six months. And then obviously I think everyone else on here is deserving. And then one of the main snubs, I kind of mentioned it before, was um, J2, who and I saw some people at Capo as well. We had the space, talked about him. Um, Lopes Prime was another one. And, and with those guys, ones that we didn't really mention too much in the process either, I think they're all having good years. Lowe's Prem to me might be the absolute best on I battle. It's either him or Appa, a battle I really want to see one day. I think both of them have a tremendously bright future in battle rap. Um, but with that one, a lot of it obviously comes down to strength of schedule. Granted, uh, some of those fights are good for I battle, but we're not just talking about who's doing the best on, on, on one particular league, right? We're talking about who's doing the best overall in battle rap. I mean, pretty much everyone here, um, damn near, has a, a varied resume going from all going to all different types of leagues, which might hurt someone, you know what I'm saying, like a Lowe's Prem or anyone, if there was an OSBL type of talent to make that run, right? Uh, you you want to see the variance, different fights and different levels of fights. His Chef Trez battle helped him a lot. I think his Lowe's Prem, uh, I think his if the Tay Rock battle went through, even with all an eye battle, I think we might be having a different conversation. Um, um, Capo has two three-rounders. One of them is him in Arsenal. Just really, really rough battle, although he won. Um, so just not that much work or that much crazy, impactful work, the B-Magic one-rounder. And then J2's been active. You know what I'm saying? J2's been active. I think that's another one of the main snubs. Uh, really just snub in terms of not on the list, I heard. And what it comes down to is that, listen, he's, he's done some good things. A lot of people have him beating JC. I do think it is a close battle, but I don't like JC, JC's performance in it at all. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it hurts because in a round, I don't want to give JC in the first. J2 equally has his worst round of the battle and they split the other two rounds from there so you know tough but a good result for j2 if, if you're great in his case uh then he's got wins versus the likes of uh k profit um cut eastwood you know what i'm saying this is where more of his dominance goes down which you know you're hearing the level of competition it's tough and when he does end up facing top competition he's a one rounder versus av um which is already limited in importance because it's a one rounder but he did lose that battle although he was pretty good and then his biggest battle, New Jersey twerk three rounds, and it's a body. You know what I'm saying? He chokes in it. Been really consistent all year outside of that, but it's just tough when that's kind of the look, and it ends up being by far the most dominant result in either direction. You don't have a body or a win that matches up to that, and then really it's one of the more dominant performances in battle rap this year. So I think that one really hurt him outside of the top 15, but everyone I mentioned is still having a good year in battle rap, um, but those are you know some of the other main snubs that I heard, but that's kind of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, try to address the list itself, um, the people who we had just on the outside, and then those that said that they should have made the list, and kind of the case that we had against it, uh, you know, a, a little bit here, kind of summarized, obviously, talked about it on Spaces and with some of these battlers, um, but yeah, that, that's the full recap here for uh, our Let's Talk Battle Rap mid-year power ranking. Just think it's a good dialogue starter, man. I would love to hear your guys' opinions in the comments down below. Who do you think was snubbed, right? What would you readjust? Obviously, it's a list. There's a million different ways to tackle it. Just let me know your main takeaways and any questions you have in the comments down below. I'd love to answer, but it's been Jay Smoke Reviews again, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to catch you on the next one, man. Peace.